Hey guys, so today we're here with my Elmira wood cooking stove, which also happens to have a propane attachment. Maybe you can't see it, but that's what this is right here. We cook on this in the summer. It has uh, warming ovens, it has a baking oven, and it, it just is an amazing tool. We've had it for about five years now, and um, before that, when I was a kid, we had a Pioneer Princess, which uh, was a wonderful tool. What I wanted to talk about was how to use wood stoves and budget with them. Do you need a super expensive, super efficient stove? Do you need a wood cook stove? Are there other tools that can help you do the same thing without having to spend a lot of money? We got this cook stove for a very, very low price. We got it for a quarter of its selling price because we just happened to find it at the right time. Uh, my parents had the Pioneer Princess that had to be shipped from Amish country back when I was a kid and it was very expensive. But I've also used inexpensive stoves and I've used handmade stoves. And the budgeting works pretty much the same way with all of them. What is your wood source? Is it hard? Is it soft? Can you scavenge for it? A lot of our wood that we have used over the years came free. Somebody was uh, putting down a tree and as long as you came and cut it and hauled it away, you could take it. Uh, one of my greatest sources of wood was tree services. I would go in if I saw someone cutting down a tree and I would ask, can I have the mulch? Can I have your, uh, all, the, all the mulch that you're going to be making? I live right here. I'll give you $20. And then I would ask, can I pick up your pieces of firewood that you've sectioned when you're finished? And so I would bring home cords and cords of wood that had already been sectioned so that all we had to do was dry it, season it, and split it later. If you have a bad back, maybe splitting isn't for you. You can go and rent for like $25 a day, a wood splitter, a log splitter from your local um, uh, True Value store. That's what we did for the two years that uh, John's back was really bothering him. And then when John wasn't here and he was in Tulsa, I learned how to split wood and I found that I really enjoy splitting my own wood because it gets to be my size, the size I want, and it gets my heart beat up, it gets me moving, it gets me outside on a day that's really cold and so I feel better after splitting my own wood. The tool that I prefer is a splitting maul rather than a regular axe. I don't have to sharpen it and the, the heft of it does most of the work. What you really need though is some kind of shelter for your wood. It's easiest if it is a solid uh, structure because then the wind can't blow it over. And if the walls are solid, it's very helpful because then you can stack sideways instead of front to back. And it's safer for small children that way because then if, if you have a slip with young children out there, you don't have the whole pile rolling on a child because it's braced sideways, which is short, versus long ways, which the whole thing can come down on a child. Um, what else? Um, I like to stack wood so that I have a two-year supply because it takes a while for it to season, it takes a while for it to dry. Again, always leave it covered. When you put your wood shed in, make sure that it faces away from the prevailing wind and away from the direction that rain or snow would be coming in because if you don't, all of your wood is going to be receiving all the rain that comes into it. So for us, our, our wood shed faces north because our wind is from the southwest. Um, other tips are keep your wood in a small container next to the house in a dry place so that you can stack it and use it at night. And for us, that's our enclosed deck during the winter. Don't keep it in the house because then any critters that are in it, any spiders, anything, wasps, a lot of times will suddenly wake up in the middle of winter because they were hibernating. You bring the wood in that they're in and then they wake up and you have yellow jackets in the house. So I always store it outside until it goes into the stove. Keep your old 100% cotton towels and t-shirts and things like that as fire starter. You don't want them to have uh, polyester or nylon or anything and it needs to be 100% cotton, but cut those into strips and they make amazing fire starters much better than paper. Paper creates a lot of ash. It, it, it just doesn't work nearly as well as uh, cotton. And then if it's secondhand stores, you see little teeny tiny tea candles, sometimes those are there, or regular candles. Those can be broken off and used as fire starters too. They're not that expensive and um, it works really well as your fire starter. Save your ash for your compost pile as long as you're not putting a lot of chemically nasty colored shiny paper into your stove. We do not 
we don't put that kind of thing in our stove. We don't put any kind of plastic in our stove. It is carcinogenic when it burns. Uh, any kind of plastic is and so we try to have it be very organically based and our cardboard goes in the compost our paper goes in the compo compost our old clothing is used as fire starter uh, the most efficient stove that I, I have used to date has been a rocket mass heater because there is a mass bench and the pea gravel that goes around it that allows us to capture heat and hold it in the house without it being either really really hot or cold uh, if you've ever seen rocket mass heaters they're they're pretty different Go over to check out the Honeydew Carpenter if you're interested in mine. It does have aircrete in it and it is phenomenal, especially because of the aircrete chimney that allows us to drop smoke 22 inches and then through a bench before going out the chimney and it's still can suction without having smoke in the house. So I hope this video was helpful. I do have a blog over under Dirt Patch Heaven about the same topic that I just wrote. And then we have all of our homesteading books, our winter hats that are made from sheep's wool and alpaca over on our Etsy store. If you're interested in that kind of thing, we appreciate the support and we'll talk to you later.